Are you are listening to the Rosenthal and Jesselnik Vanity Project, or as I like to call it, the biggest mistake of Anthony's career? Greg, why are you yelling? <laughs> Ah, welcome aboard. This is happening. The Vanity Project. It's our first show. Thank you for listening. It's really our second show because we tried to tape a video show, Anthony, about six, seven weeks ago, and the NFL was not really a big fan of it. They were not on board. We didn't just try it. We did it. You know, we did it. <laughs> right. uh, we did it uh, the best we could. And I think the note that came back was, uh, I did not laugh. Yeah, that that was one. No laughter. I laughed. I heard some, I, I heard some good feedback. But from the NFL, no laughter. Another quote was, I hated it. That was one. So the, the, project, yeah. <laughs> the project was a little dead on arrival for a little, a little bit. But we got it back now in audio form and we're going to try to do this every week we like audio form you know they said that i think a lot of people the nfl just thought i wasn't good looking enough to, <laughs> to really carry a tv show uh so yeah now we're here on radio and i've got a great i've got a great voice i've got great tones coming out of me why yeah why would they want you uh on their airwaves i i think <laughs> i think uh you know we've got the title the Vanity Project. It, it, but see, you, now you're already messing it up right off the bat. Like, it's the Rosenthal and Jesselnik Vanity Project. We have to stick to it. What did I say? You said the Vanity Project. Well, that's like shortening it. But it's like shortening it the wrong way. If you called it the Rosenthal and Jesselnik, that would make sense to me. Well, either way, it's it's kind of the way the, the NFL, I guess, is looking at it uh, from my perspective, you know, from my thing. I, I, if you're not familiar with me, if you're a fan of Anthony, I'm a writer at NFL.com. NFL media been here for three or four years which if you are going to be a writer it's like the it's like the top level you can be as far as you know it's like NFL network uh kind of editor slash writer and then right below that I would say novelist <laughs> you know but you're you're killing it you're killing it man. <laughs> after I, I did what eight or nine years before that pro football talk NBC sports.com you of course you're a famous comedian you've had uh your own show the Jessel Nick offensive on comedy central it's true uh, you were just the host of Last Comic Standing. Don't bring that up ever again. On NBC. Why not bring that up? You did a great job. I did a great job. I was just unhappy with the final product. You yeah. know what I mean? It's like if we did this, if we did this and at the end, they were like, oh, uh, hey, great job, guys. But we edited out all the jokes and put it on the air with your name on it. That's what Last Comic Standing was like. <laughs> well, that, that is pretty much what's going to happen here. That's, I feel like the subtext of the entire show is that you're going to try to get me fired that you're, we're going to talk about subjects and it's going to get edited out and then you're going to end up getting angry or booted off doing this in the first place. Oh, yeah. I have bitten every single hand that's ever fed me, uh, even if you're not even trying to feed me. You know, if I just see a hand, I try to bite it. Um, it happens to me a lot in the bathroom. They didn't even want this title, by the way. No, they fought us on the title. They said the title was kind of too cocky, The Vanity Project. And you were like, have you ever seen Anthony Jessup do anything? <laughs> yeah, they were saying it was too negative. Like, this is like the nicest thing that anyone's ever said about you, that this is, this is a vanity project. <laughs> well, let's, real fa let's talk about why we have the show, Greg. Because, I mean, they know who we are. They know who you are. They know who we are. But they don't know why we have a show together. Like, why would I ever want to do this? Why would I ever take time out of my schedule to be a part of something like this? Why don't you explain? Well, it's, yeah, it's a bad career move. But you're doing it because we're friends going back to college. Greg, we're best friends. We're best friends. Controversial decision at my wedding. Um, you know, we'll we'll get into that some other time. Maybe. But we are we are best friends, and we have been since uh, freshman year of college at Tulane. Um, we we met. We we were in the same fraternity at Tulane. We both moved out here together in Los Angeles uh, when we graduated from college. We also spent the summer out here. Before that, you know, we've kind of lived out here at the same time. We've lived in New York at the same time, and this is our chance to do something cool together. Something this, creative. This is your chance to do something cool, period. You wanted to do it. I wanted to do it. I wanted to do it. I wanted to do something like when, I do, when I'm on podcasts, you know, I never have to care that much because I'm a guest. Usually I can just I get that do listening whatever. to it. That's so right, now, the Brett Easton Ellis one. Yes. But now that I'm doing this with you, I'm going to put in just as much effort. Like this will be no <laughs> different. Uh, so I kind of like just watching you squirm. I'm not squirming. I mean, I, I look at it as a chance of two friends. You get a chance. How many chances friends, in life are you going to get? To do something with your friend that, that could be cool, creative, and that people will like. Well, if the NFL Network has any say, probably zero. <laughs> probably no chance. So let, let's get to some – we're going to talk football on this show. We're going to talk uh, 
Football, comedy. Football, football, comedy, friendship, entertainment. Yeah, we're going to talk about our friendship. Talk about children. What's going on in life. Yeah, you're the godfather uh, to my daughter, of and course, and my son. Don't forget about him. Well, you I always have to remind you. I, I know. Well, you decided to choose him. Um, you know, I had asked you to be my god. Uh, father to my daughter a long time ago, and then you you said it would be unfair to come over and not give my son Walker presents as well. Exactly, I spoiled like your daughter just turned four years old, and tell them what I gave her for her four year, for her fourth birthday. What did you give her? Now I, I forget. Don't remember. I gave her, I gave her uh, sapphire studded hair. Clips. Oh my gosh! Sapphire studded hair clips, <laughs> which she responded to with, uh, "I already have a hair clip." <laughs> and then I gave her a diamond necklace, which your wife will not let her wear. Well, you went, you went to the uh, Emmy suites, gifting suites before, mm -hmm. and you wouldn't have gone out and bought her hundred dollar, you know, hundreds of dollars worth of diamonds. No, it would have been like a smash and grab type of thing. I would have <laughs> just gone into a case and just gone buck wild till I came out with stuff. But, but you happened to the birthday party was on the same day that you went to this Emmy gift theme suite mm -hmm. and then just bam i just went to places and i was like give me something for a four-year-old girl and they're like that we don't really do that we actually give these to celebrities so they can wear them and i said give it to me and you thought you were being a hero but ultimately i just put them away i was like this these are not you know appropriate gifts for a no. four-year-old she's just gonna eat them or throw them away but i'll give it back to her you know when she's 18 or something yeah you guys acted like i gave her naked pictures of myself <laughs> <laughs> so uh what have you been up to lately anthony you uh it's been a big week for you your netflix special came out thoughts and prayers just came out on friday it's been very well received article in the new york times today i was gonna bring that up i mean this is Thank that you. that has to be the first article ever written about you in the new york times I, I think i mean you've been probably mentioned before but this was basically a think piece about you yeah it was about like how uh how political correctness isn't ruining my comedy it helps it you know, because I kind of go against that in every way. It was, it was a great article. It was an honor to have been mentioned. Uh, and I just finished a tour. I was on tour with Oddball Festival uh, for the last eight weeks. And I actually had a great, I had a football run in on Sunday. I finished, we finished the tour in Dallas, uh, Dallas, Texas. And I got to meet Tony Romo. Tony uh, Romo. Yes. I got this to meet, perfect. I got to meet Tony Romo. And I'll say this before I tell the story. I like Tony Romo as much as I can like a cowboy. Does that make sense? Like, I'm a Steelers guy. You know that. I don't really like other players. Like, I don't play fantasy because I don't want to root for anyone else. But I like Tony Romo. He seems like a good guy. Kind of like how Red Sox fans felt about Derek Jeter for the most part. They were like, well, you know. Yeah, they respect the way he plays the game. You know, he seems like a cool guy. If he played on my team, I'd be like, oh, he's my favorite, but he's not. Um, so I get to the show, and they're like, oh, Tony Romo's going to be here. Tony Romo, I guess, was in the movie Trainwreck uh, with Amy Schumer, which I, I saw, but I don't remember him in it. But I guess he's in it. I and didn't like, see Tony Romo in that. He, I think he must have done a quick cameo or something. Was he in that scene with uh, Marv Albert? The worst scene in any movie ever? No, <laughs> I love that not. scene. That was <laughs> so great. Bad. I love that scene. You're wrong about this. Terrible. One. It's a great movie, and that's the one of the worst scenes. Marv's of one of the best act, one of the unknown um, acting talents of this century, Marv Albert. Well, you know what? I'll, I'll <laughs> agree to disagree. I'll All right. So I get that, and like, Tony Romo's going to be there. And I'm like, okay, I'm not that excited, but I'm like, all right, whatever. That just means like more celebrities backstage. So I'm kind of wandering. I'm trying to avoid them. And in my in my dressing room, I have like a rider where I have alcohol in there. There's like a bottle of tequila, a bottle of vodka. Tonight I'm drinking vodka. It's the end of the tour. I've got I have pour myself a drink and I'm wandering around. And, and the tour manager comes up to me, and he's got a little concern in his eye. He goes, Anthony, we might have to get you another bottle of vodka. And I say, why? What does that mean? Because, I mean, this is my bottle. It's in my contract. Like, something <laughs> bad has happened if it's not there anymore. I like that it's in your contract. Oh, yeah. Everyone has, everyone's got a ride or something backstage. Mine is mostly full of booze, maybe a pizza, some turkey sandwiches. <laughs> and they say, the, 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 uh, the vodka's gone. Tony Romo took your vodka. Wow. Now, you know, I'm not a violent person, but I get angry pretty quick. Yeah. And I immediately become furious because I imagine Tony Romo walking into my dressing room, a room with my name on the door, walking in, taking my bottle of vodka and leaving. And I'm furious. I'm like, where is he? Show him to me right now. He like, might have oh. seen you ahead of time and been like, this guy thinks he's the best looking guy here. He sees you as a threat, takes your vodka. I mean, I'm sure he sees he me as a threat. Takes you out of your game. <laughs> but I think he probably just saw me walking around and was like, that looks tasty. I want what that guy's having. You know, I mean, a lot of people look at me and they think, what's he doing? How can I copy it? <laughs> but I'm ticked. I'm like, where is he? And they go, no, 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 Tony didn't take it. They say Amy gave it to him. Mm. He had said, "Do you have any vodka?" She's like, "I know Amy Schumer does." Amy Schumer, and in Amy's defense, I had just told her that early in the day I threw open a Starbucks 
That's how hungover I was. Threw up in a Starbucks at 3 in the afternoon. So I don't need that vodka, but it's still mine, you know. So I'm a little annoyed. I'm a little, but I'm going to let it go. I'm going to let it go, but I'm still kind of ticked about Tony Roman drinking my vodka. He's having fun backstage. All of the crew, they are all Seahawks fans. And they're furious. They just lost that game, and they hate Tony Romo. Mm. And they're like, Anthony, I can't believe we took your vodka. Like, do you mean to get him out of the, the backstage? <laughs> do you mean to clear him out? So right before I go on stage, they walk up, and they're like, Tony, you got you to get out of here. He's like looking at them like, I'm Tony Romo. I don't think they go, it's for performers. And they just like, with as much disrespect as they can, push him to the side. Yes! He's still kind of smiling. And as I'm about to walk out, the crew says, Anthony, it would be really funny if at the end of your set, you say, the Cowboys. All right? And this is 15,000 people in Dallas on a Sunday night. I go out, and I kill. I have a great set. And at the end, I'm like, and the crowd's going crazy for me. It's like my final night of the tour. So happy. I say, ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much, Dallas. F- the Cowboys. And I turn, and, the, <laughs> and the crowd just immediately goes from cheering to boos, like thunderous boos. And I turn to walk around. I go to hand the mic to what I think is going to be Jeff Ross. Jeff Ross has been hosting the tour. Instead, Tony Romo walks out and takes the mic from me. Like, he's going to introduce Amy. And he's kind of smiling, but he's also like, I heard full well what you said. So I just go, oh, I know you. You're the who took my vodka. <laughs> and then I hand him the mic in front of 15,000 people. And I thought about dropping the mic on the ground. That would have been amazing. It would have been amazing, but it also would have been not have been as classy as just yelling the Cowboys. In yeah, because you're classy. That's what, so I, that's what I think of when I think of you. When I think of this entire story, I come out with it, that <laughs> class. Yeah, you can picture that's me wearing it. a tuxedo as I tell it. Uh, but then I walk backstage and the entire crew is looking at me. Like they just saw a ghost. They're like, we can't. We were joking. We said, yell the Cowboys to all of these people. <laughs> but the, I am a hero now to that entire crew. And in Tony Romo's defense, afterwards he came up to me. We talked. He was very nice. He was very complimentary. But when he went out on stage, he takes the mic and he's like, hey, every, and the place is going nuts. They love Tony Romo. And he goes, uh, I don't know who that guy was, but I think he said some, uh, some pretty uh, inexcusable things about the Cowboys. And the crowd's kind of like, what? Like, what? inexcusable? Okay. <laughs> he's like, how about we never invite him back to Dallas ever again, huh? And I'm just sitting backstage like, uh, great, Tony. You're going to ban me? I don't think so. Tony Romo has that kind of power. He, he really does. He's a god in, uh, in Dallas. They loved him. So they you, loved him. you're not really missing much not going back to Dallas. I like Dallas. That, that, that story made me think a couple things. First of all, Tony Romo, he should be uh, a hero to Seahawks fans for what he did dropping the extra point in the 2007 playoffs. True. Great True. moment for Seattle. Jeff Ross was going to bring him out. Thanks for blowing that, Tony. Jeff Ross was going to bring him out and roast him before he introduced Amy. And everyone was so excited. And then Tony was like, no, don't roast me. But when uh, after he introduced Amy, Ross came out and he goes, oh, sorry, guys. Tony Romo just fell and got injured himself backstage again. And went <laughs> crazy. I also want to know, like, what what led to the Starbucks Starbucks puking? Uh, I mean, like, t- describe that moment in terms of the different low moments of your life. Where where does that rank? I've seen you puke in some like ugly places, so I yes. guess maybe it doesn't rank that high. No, it, it's pretty embarrassing. I mean, the fact that it was like four in the afternoon and I just eaten like oatmeal and a cup of coffee that was tough. But whenever I go to Austin, Austin, Texas, is what does it to me? I'm not a big, I'm not a, like a crazy drinker, but I, I enjoy my too. I enjoy hurting myself in certain ways. Uh, but yeah, Austin, two nights in Austin, Texas, I will be throwing up in a in a coffee house the next day. But I did make it to a bathroom, which is everyone's first question. Because mm-hmm. if you throw up in a bathroom oh. at a Starbucks, it's way better than throwing up in the middle of a Starbucks. Yeah, that's like one of the cleanest places you could be. Mm-hmm. Bathroom of a Starbucks. Night and day. Let's uh, let's go through some headlines, shall we? Should we go through the stories of the day? Why don't you? I go- don't. I don't know if we can top that story. Each show would be nice if, like, you know, this is a show about sports and comedy. You know what I mean? If I could tell another professional athlete to go <laughs> themselves every week, that's pretty amazing. Tell you about it, yeah. Um. But well, why don't we go through some of the headlines? Of Let's the do day. You go through the headlines. I'll jump in if I feel like it. If not, I've got my phones. I can just kind of <laughs> scroll through some things. Cameron Hayward been in the news this week. My boy, Steelers. Steel, you're, of course, a big Steelers fan. Big Steelers fan. I loved Ironhead. I loved his, his dad because he played for Pitt. Yeah, and he played for the Saints. Mm-hmm. We, we, of course, are kind of closet Saints fans. At least I am a little bit. Adopted. Yeah, they're my, like, my second favorite team. Uh, he got in trouble this week, of course, fined by the NFL for wearing his eye black of the iron head on it, you know, honoring his father. It's, it's breast cancer month, but he just wanted to honor his father who, who he lost. And he did it for a second straight week, even after uh, he was fined. Um, it turns out the NFL and him worked out some sort of agreement. I don't know if they reduced the fines or 
who knows maybe they agreed to donate something to a certain charity they have they've dropped dropped the issue Do what happened the nfl is in the right here I, I mean i understand why they're doing it i understand i mean i think that the best way you can honor uh, your father is by writing his nickname on your face for a little for a couple hours a week. Uh, you know that's you, you can't really mess with that. I think it would be funny if he got like the Iron Head Eye Black just tattooed on his face, and then what would they do? Yeah, they couldn't do anything about it, or they might just go back and say edited for content. Oh, did I go too far? Careful, uh, that joke's not gonna make it. That's they're, not gonna make it. They're just gonna cut that. Maybe not. <laughs> I was thinking of I was thinking of like when I initially saw you were in the New York Times today I was thinking of immediately emailing that to um, the particular shadowy league figure that said he didn't laugh at our show that he hated our show the first time and I was gonna be like just let us have the title that we want they have a, this guy has an article in the New York Times but then I was looking and in the third paragraph of the article, it basically mentions all the different types of jokes that you had. And it said something like molestation, mm -hmm. uh, cancer mm -hmm. was one of them. For sure. What else did they have? Pretty much all the greatest all, hits. All the bad ones. <laughs> yeah. They could add breast cancer. That would be good to add, though. Um, another headline this week. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how to get out of that. <laughs> Donuts. Donuts. Donut time. What do they call it? The donut party? The, Mo the Minnesota Vikings have a donut club, uh, which they get together every Saturday morning. Very early in the morning. 7 a.m.? 7 a.m.? 7.50 in the morning. Well, at 7.50 in the morning, the Minnesota Vikings have an unveiling of the donuts, but you can't touch them for the first 10 minutes, which seems ridiculously childish i don't think so i think that was like the part that made sense to me was that they make everybody like uh, when i heard when i first heard about this story at first i thought like people were gonna get mad at them you know like if this this is the vikings but if this is the steelers because i just heard donut party i'm like do you, are you telling me the entire team wakes up like three hours before they have to on a saturday morning and eats as many donuts as they can because that's what it sounded like that's not that's not great athletic behavior well, not only that, but Jared Allen, who was featured in the piece, a former Viking, had the right idea. That one of the, they had many rules of Donut Club, including don't talk about Donut Club, uh, but that's been blown out of the water with this article. Mm -hmm. One of them was you have to show up on time. There's no one shows up late. But Jared Allen got around it by he would pay for the donuts every week, stroll in an hour and a half or two hours later when they actually had to be there. He seemed like he knew what he was talking about. I mean, they're talking, they're acting like donuts are some sort of contraband, like the, like the toughest thing that you could smuggle in, that you have to take a yeah. look at it for 10 minutes. And it's only three dozen donuts. It's not that many. I mean, I don't know what donuts cost, but it can't <laughs> be, it can't be that much. No, much. but it's, it does sound like a bad idea. It's not a healthy. If they were like getting together and eating kale or like protein shake Saturday morning, I can't picture JJ Watt like knocking down three dozen donuts. They had T-shirts. I know. The, so they get together every Saturday morning. They all have the donuts. It's a special team bonding thing. One thing I thought immediately was like, like they're not doing this. The Miami Dolphins aren't doing this. You know, the New York Giants aren't doing this because there's something to do in New York or Miami. Like this would only happen in in with. Mil multi-millionaire athletes living in Minnesota. Well, only once boating season is over. <laughs> Fred uh, Smoot. Uh, when I first heard about this, I thought it sounded like fraternity hazing. You know what I mean? It sounded mm. like like the what do they call it? The cracker game, which we don't have to go define, but I think people will know what the cracker game is. Um, it sounded like a gross. I don't know what the cracker game is, and we were in a fraternity. But we never had to do anything like the cracker game. We no, never have to do something like that. I I find do you find like I don't usually volunteer the information that I was in a fraternity. I'm embarrassed by it. We weren't very fraternity like we we like we pledged as freshmen and went through all the hell of like hazing, and then once we got in, we were like, this is stupid. Why did we do all this? And we never really showed up much after that. We weren't really good fraternity members. No, and they didn't. Uh, Tulane's different because it's just kind of like you go out into bar. You know, you can go to bars when you're 18. No one's really living in the fraternity house in particular. Like three or four people are, but not the, the whole fraternity. It's just kind of like a, a party thing. But even then, I'm embarrassed. And in the one we were in was the most lazy, so like, lazy. junk fraternity ever. Yeah, I just remember having to do a lot of push-ups. I remember once having to, like, hang from a statue in the middle of Audubon Park and put a giant bra on, like, Lady Justice while you guys all ran laps around the fountain. What? You remember this? It was, like, four in the morning. It was a rough... That was a rough, that was hell week. I don't remember but, anything. And then we... For the uh, most part. I remember... Course, donut party. I remember the crab oil was used. 
That was kind of scarring. I didn't have to mess with that because I was I was pretty I was so lazy and I had kind a of job. Up. I got to leave early every day to go work my job, uh, cold calling high school students. That's what I did, <laughs> uh, which I was not good at. One thing that you know listeners would definitely not know about me, but you know about me is that I have the worst memory of anyone I've ever known, and one reason why I like to keep you around, other than you know your celebrity and uh, the exorbitant gifts that you give to my kids are <laughs> that you remember things about my past, my college experience, you know, time in New York, really anything to do with the last 10 years. I and once, you can uh, tell me about it. And it's like t hearing a, a story for the first time. It's like awakenings. Yeah, I once reminded you about uh, your wedding. What about it? Just that it happened. No. <laughs> <laughs> and I also, I mean, I think I get deserve more credit than that. I think that, I think I'm responsible for your entire sports writing career. How do you figure? Okay. You want me to break it down? Sure. Okay. We lived in LA together. What were you doing when you first got to LA? I was actually holding the job that you, you sh could have had or should have had initially were almost I would have been fired immediately. slated to have. I was an assistant at a movie production company, um, Hallway Pictures. Uh, that had a deal with Warner Brothers, which is kind of geared towards making African American, uh, you know, style movies. You were giving way movies. too much information. You should have just been like, "I was an assistant." Yeah. To a movie. Well, I like the details. Cut everything Greg said and just put in, uh, "You were an assistant, Greg." And so I, <laughs> and I told you, I was like, "You should be a sports writer, Greg. Reach for your dreams. Start a blog online and start writing sports stories every day." And you did that. And then I bought you a Peter Gammons bobblehead doll, which I think was the inspiration <laughs> for you to really take that next step and leave Los Angeles and become a professional sports writer. And now here we are. Well, you know, your whole bit is, you know, sarcasm, right? So I'm not even sure if you really did tell me to start writing in a sports blog. That actually sounds like I 100% it's true. told you to do that. Because I did do that. Yeah. I started yeah. writing a baseball blog while I was in Los Angeles. And then I got really tired of doing various assistant jobs and I was a page at NBC and other stuff and got sick of it and then left LA. Yeah. So um, I could, well, I could say that your entire career is at least partially, uh, that I'm responsible for it. How so? How did, how did you make ends meet when we were out here? This is very, I gave you like every job that you ever got and you got fired from half of them. I had a job, <laughs> I had a job at NBC productions, <laughs> And I, I was kind of a, an assistant to a producer there as well. And she would have, you know, jobs on shows. I think you worked as an accounting clerk at American Dreams, I believe was American the show. Dreams, I got you that job. Deadwood. You got fired from that? No, I got laid off at the end of the season. I didn't get fired. And then okay. that woman rehired me on Deadwood. And then she rehired me on the unit where I stabbed her in the back. Mm. Which was like a story literally? Uh, it would literally stabbing her in the back would have been more pleasant than what I actually did to her. Well, now I want to know what you did to her, not to get too far off topic, because I really You've don't know. You've the story about the, the email, my accent? <laughs> yeah. We'll tell another episode. We'll see. If the NFL lets us keep going, maybe during the playoffs, I'll tell that story. Well, part of my whole pitch was, like, this is going to be really real. You know what I mean? This is These are two friends um, that have a... Best friends. Best friends that have a genuine <laughs> relationship. That's actually written to the contract that I have to say that each time Anthony insists. I insist. Uh, and I think one thing that you've got to think about, Anthony, is if that's how it is, how real you're really comfortable getting. You know what I mean? Listen, I don't think about things, Greg. I know about them. Like, because your whole bit on stage... I mean, it's not a bit... <laughs> I did. If you use you, the if you use the word shtick right now, I'm leaving. Yeah, lose my mind. <laughs> Cut that, please. <laughs> uh, you know, you, I wouldn't. You know, what would you? How would people describe you on stage? It's kind. Of, I wouldn't say it's a character, but it's an amped up uh, version of yourself. In real life, you're you're a pretty nice guy. I'm much nicer than I am on stage. I would describe on stage. I'm like I'm like Darth Vader had a, and the devil had a baby. You know what I mean? That sort of thing. <laughs> but off stage, I'm just like slightly. Slightly. I'm, I'm pretty much only nice to you and your immediate family. That, but that's enough. You sure. mean, you're really nice to us. Yeah. You used to be nice to some members of your family, maybe, maybe less less so now. Your brother, I guess I'd throw that Brother's in. Brother's great. That's what I'm trying to get in, in here is that, you know, if we're going to do this, you know, you have to be comfortable with it getting really real. I'm, I'm happy to get real. I just feel like the sole responsibility of being real is on me. I feel like you couldn't be real. 
you know, on the real world. That's how unreal you are. That's how fake you are as a person. And that if, I, if the responsibility of being real is on me, then I get to dole out how we do it. I'm not going to tell all of my stories. It's not okay what you just said right now. We're best friends. You know what I mean? That's what happens. So I guess we could <laughs> each claim responsibility for each other's career. You were an influence. In one way. You know what I mean? I looked at you and I was like, how do I not end up like that? You know what I mean? What <laughs> What can I do? I was living my dream pretty early. I got a job at Roto World and was was loving it pretty early. I went to a lot of – give me a break. I went to a lot of your lousy – um, early stand-up sets. You were great from the beginning, and I and I thought you were gonna do big things right away because I saw all the no talent uh, hacks that were around you that I was forced. And anyone that lives in Los Angeles inevitably has some sort of stand-up friend or something where they have to go to a lot of these shows, and it's the most painful thing ever because I would. I mean, it was a regular part of my life to go to you know these stand-up shows where it was you, one or two pretty funny people and like seven people where you could not be less comfortable watching them perform. I felt bad for you guys you would have to come to that cuz they call them bringer shows where you have to like bring five friends to watch you. So not only did I, am I making you guys watch these horrible people but you're seeing me do the exact same jokes every single night. Uh that was yeah, I do owe you a debt for that except were you at the first show I ever did? I don't think so. No, you weren't. I don't know. Did I have an option? I mean, we lived together up. at the time. Every once in a while, I like to just kind of give you something that lets you know you don't have me all the way. <laughs> <laughs> you know, just want you know, keeps you wanting more. <laughs> uh, Fred Jackson this week. Do you know what team he's on now? Are we it's still t- are we going back to headlines? Why not? Let's do it. I mean, we'll keep talking. No rules, bro. Uh, Fred Jackson this week. Do you know what team he's on now? He's on the Seattle Seahawks. I don't want to test you. You're a pretty big NFL fan, just for people listening to this. Anthony's not one of these um, people you see on television that says they're a fan just to kind of like that that's going to get them in with the male demo or something. I mean, you're a pretty hardcore sports fan watching Sports Center every night. That's yeah, I'm not really worried about my placement in the male demo. I think I got it, I got it nailed out. <laughs> uh, but, uh, but, yeah, no, I am a fan. I'm a diehard Steelers guy, but I follow the rest of the league. You know, I, I know what's up. Um, Fred Jackson got into a big car crash. Fred Jackson's been one of my favorite players. The end, I wouldn't the even say big league. car crash. He hit, did when he hit, hit a street sign? Is that right? What did? But it, it was played up like it was um, a big story initially on TMZ, and that proved to be uh, factually wrong. We never had any of that on NFL Network, but he, but he did get into an accident. Um, initially, it was said that Marshawn Lynch – uh, was there and they were racing. Dr- drag racing. He was not drag racing. He just showed up afterwards uh, and was seen, you know, was on his way out of the out of work and he was seen that his teammate was all right. He was all right. There's no charges. There's no nothing. Seahawks backfield's going to be fine. Um, but did you, when you heard that they were drag racing, did you believe it? Because I believed it 100%. No, because it was would. on TMZ. But it's still, but TMZ, well, they get things right sometimes. Like, it's, like, those guys have such nice cars. Like, Marshawn Lynch has a Lamborghini in his driveway. That, uh, I met a guy on this tour who he says he's from Seattle. And he's the same driver as Marshawn Lynch. This guy picks up Marshawn every, every like, whenever Marshawn needs to ride for something, whether they're going to games or going, going on the road, whatever. And he says he, he pulls into Marshawn's driveway, and it's a really small driveway. Big house, small driveway, and he's got a Lamborghini, a brand new Lamborghini in the front sitting there. And whenever the guy pulls in to pick up Marshawn, Marshawn comes out, puts his luggage in the guy's car. And then so that the guy can turn around in the driveway, he walks up, picks up the front of the Lamborghini <laughs> with his hands, <laughs> lifts it up like Arnold Schwarzenegger <laughs> in Twins turning off a car alarm, and then moves it over a few inches so the guy can back up and move around. He's a goddamn superhero. Could so you imagine yeah. lifting up your car every time someone had to turn around in your driveway? Like... Amazing. It, it sounds like a car I want. But it doesn't sound like a guy who would race his teammate after practice. Like, hey, I'll race you to that street sign. Whoever hits it first wins. I can see <laughs> those idiots doing that. Fred Jackson's not an idiot. Maybe Lynch. I don't know. They, they both seem crazy. Um, let's, what else do we want to talk about? How about, how about NFL Network um, really kick-started a story this week and I was there when it happened, at least when it got on air and, you know, this whole hubbub happened that I don't know if you saw this, that that briefly the NFL Network um, showed some nudity during the show last Sunday uh, for an interview where Albert Breer was interviewing Adam Pacman Jones or formerly Pacman Jones in the Bengals locker room. But in the background, there was a bunch of Bengals guys and, you know, they briefly showed some nudity 
and uh, you know the players or the the analysts afterwards cracked up a little bit about it. You know, it was clearly embarrassed. It was never shown again. The NFL Network eventually apologized about it, but it's become a real story because the Bengals complained. You know, one of their players that was pictured nude um, was really upset and offended by it. And the NFLPA president, Eric Winston, who's also on the Bengals, uh, says this is an issue for them. It's been an issue for a while that they don't that 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 nudity, having to be naked in front of uh, players is like a, is a problem, which totally makes sense to me. He said, in what other workplace are we going to have to be, do you have to be naked in front of, and it's not about being guy, girl, sports writers or anything like what other thing, like we need to have more time. And there is a 10 minute cooling off period where they get to change and everything, but it's not enough time because you got the play, you know, the coach is given a big speech and you got a shower and all that. And that they want to come up with a situation so that this never happens and that they never have to have, you know, they're wang in front of uh, America again or any of the sports writers. I feel like this is like a really passive aggressive way for you to tell me to put clothes on right now. <laughs> I feel like the reason we do a podcast <laughs> is so I can wear whatever I want. And this is how I'm comfortable. Um, but, yeah, I think there's a lot of ways that the NFL can deal with this. One, of course, bathing suits for every player. If you want at all times. Another thing is body paint. Body paint. Virtual body paint. That would be can, good. You can see them naked, but you don't really know what's going on. That feels like it would be more time consuming. You know, like who would be putting on the bat the body paint like before the game hayward hayward would paint him up uh <laughs> put put his put his dad's initials all over the players <laughs> bodies uh spray him down um no i think that would be uh, that would be very like is that guy wearing a bikini or is he naked you don't know it's body paint um i, I blame the camera i always i always thought the body paint thing was a little i don't know it's like people that got really excited about the sports illustrated swimsuit body paint issue like i get it but it's like there's porn everywhere Plus, they look even better in just the bathing suits. It's still like airbrushed. Right. Like you're seeing. Like I would – like wouldn't you the, – the the bathing suit, like that. that's great. That was great. I mean at a certain point – Edited because Greg wasn't funny. Uh, is any of this going to be on the show eventually, Brandon, or are we just talking to ourselves at this point? I don't see why any of it will get cut. Okay. None of it seems too much. <laughs> well, I, we'll see what happens. All right. Not, not my favorite. So – one of our uh, things, You'll see if it works. You know, one thing. You know, just speaking to the listeners, and please uh, give us feedback. Give me feedback. Uh, give give Greg. Feedback. Yeah, Anthony's I don't, I don't not going to check your feedback. I don't need to know. You're very un social media friendly, or just unfriendly in general. Yeah, I kind of ignore. It. If you if you if you like if you take the compliments, you also have to take the insults, and I don't care about. There, that criticism, you know, I, I I perform publicly like live, so the audience tells me what I need to know. I don't need some, I don't need some 14 year old in Iowa tweeting at me that he didn't like my last joke, or that he doesn't think this podcast is funny enough, mm. or that, that you should be replaced. You know, I don't <laughs> want, I don't want to be reading things like that. But you can, you can, uh, you can tweet Greg, and he'll love it. That was one thing, you know, and that Anthony came up with, and NFL and NFL was considering that have someone play me for this podcast like really just have a guy that was like hey it's anthony's longtime friend but with more personality <laughs> maybe like five or six inches taller you know ability to roll with the punches come up with some jokes a little better who are they gonna get for that i don't know I like to see, see that cast. fred savage i get a lot on twitter speaking of which really i know fred i worked for fred once really <laughs> yeah he could he directed the garfunkel notes episode i was on edited to keep greg's job just ruined it. Take that out. Um, <laughs> what I was trying to get to was, you know, I want – this is an evolving show. The title could change, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. It was – originally it was going to be uh, the Anthony, Greg, and Anthony show because Anthony insisted that his name be first. And last. And last. Yeah. Um, eventually that got overruled. Uh, the, the network didn't really – like. it was going to be the Greg and Anthony Vanity Project – but they didn't really like that. They wanted Jesselnik to be in there because they think just America is going to iTunes and randomly searching Jesselnik. Not just America. I think it's international now. <laughs> so we went with that. So that could change. And what, I, what I'm trying to get to is it's a pretty free-flowing podcast, clearly. Yeah. Um, but we might you know, want to come up with some weekly segments. Sure, we could do that. And if you guys have things you want to know, you want to hear us talk about, you want to ask us questions, feel free to, uh, feel free to do that. And Greg will take a look at them. <laughs> So I did throw out some questions this week. Uh, it was a little – or asked for some questions on Twitter. It was a little last minute. What, what's last minute, Greg? 
Well, because we've been planning this for quite some time. What uh, what time did you send out the thing? We have, that? and we were on the phone last night, for instance, for you, a while. But, I but sent when you out, said last minute, do you mean like a couple days ago? When I send out, like, e- you know, we were sending out emails. Frankly, I've done more preparation for this than just about anything else. <laughs> <laughs> um, a couple hours before. Okay. A couple so hours yes, before the minute. show. Didn't get great. Didn't get a ton of responses. Didn't get great responses. Um, How many followers do you have on Twitter? I've got... Over a hundred for sure. Uh, yeah, over one fifteen or so. One hundred fifteen thousand. Yeah. Okay. Over one hundred fifteen thousand. One hundred twenty thousand. Pretty good, actually. There you go. Look at that. Wow. A breaking digits. Just from our friendship. That's great. Please. Yeah. Now it's gonna really explode. I don't Social follow you media on Twitter. Maven. I wish I could follow you on Twitter. You're my best friend, but I can't. Yeah, it was a little disappointing with you and some of your, you know, high octane celebrity friends once followed me, but then they got sick of my, uh, <laughs> they got sick of my football analysis. I get it. Yeah. You don't want to hear about it's good know, analysis, the Buccaneers but... offensive line or whatever. So please send us send us more questions next time. Tell us tell us what you think of the show. Um, but I do got a couple of them. So uh, Edited for content. Let's go to uh, Eric. The last name was a little confusing. Laren? Laren Tebby? Laren Tebby? <laughs> <laughs> Would you trust leaving your daughter or goddaughter? Um, I added that. Uh, you know, in your case, with Ben Roethlisberger as a babysitter. Well, you go first. You go first. No. Okay. I, I'm happy to. I'm happy to take the lead in this. You'd be the last guy me. for I, many reasons. First of all, since it's a goddaughter situation, nice and I love. I, I adore your goddaughter, but I would leave her with just about anybody. I don't think I'm really legally responsible for what would happen. So, and I think that Ben has turned what I call the Jesus corner. You know when like players get into so much trouble, they just start saying Jesus in every interview they give, and then it like means they're forgiven and it's okay after that. Ben's in super Jesus territory right now. He makes uh, he makes um, <laughs> what's his name? Oh my Russell God, Wilson. He, yeah, he makes Russell Wilson look like the guy from The Exorcist. Uh, <laughs> so I'm uh, I would trust Ben with just about anybody. Edited to keep your interest. Sure. Would you be afraid that he would throw your daughter for 350 yards? <laughs> Because that would be pretty. That would be pr- a pretty big screw up, babysitting wise. Who was the player in the NFL that you would most trust your daughter with? Oh wow, that's a great question. Because I feel like whenever they give I mean, Tom guy, Brady, I immediately thought of just because you know. You know, Tom he wouldn't Brady. Even, he wouldn't feed her. She'd starve to death. What do you? Th- what does that even mean? He's a weird. He's a weirdo. He eats. He weird wouldn't things. give her. He wouldn't give her soda. But that's good. You don't want her having soda. I give her soda every chance I get. She's a growing girl. <laughs> she's very that, against it. She's that pup. Um. Who else look at a very responsible... What about Peyton Manning? No, he's from New Orleans. No, you don't want Peyton. I mean, I love... I like the Mannings. They're from New Orleans and all that, but just... I, I, I feel like he hasn't... I don't think he's he's the one carrying the uh, fathering load in that family. Does no. he even... Yeah, he does have that. So that knocks out Drew Brees. Like, have you ever seen Peyton Manning's wife? No. Does anyone know that she's... I mean, she she's out there. I thought he was married to that lady who owns Papa John's. <laughs> It's, it's really stretched face, right? Back at that one. Yeah. You should stay on the mic and just laugh the whole time, by the way. <laughs> that will provide some be, good uh, laugh gonna, track. That's going to be great uh, <laughs> Great for the show. So, uh, Anthony, you had this idea of how we would end each show. Yeah, predictions. Um, every week. You wanted to make some predictions. And but <laughs> I'll let you explain it. Because okay, so here's what I wanted to do. I wanted to do like Greg and I are going to talk. You're going to hear our, you know, uh, us talk. It's, it's fun to hear friends uh, discuss things. A lot of them football related. But at the end, I want to have a kind of a hard out and be able to kind of do predictions for what I think is going to happen the next week. And it's going to be kind of like a comedy bit where we're going to try it. And if it doesn't work, like if, if it works, you're going to hear us do the bit. If not, as soon as I'm done talking right now, there's going to be a cut. And then you're going to hear us say, well, that didn't work. And that will be the end of the show. <laughs> and either way, I think the comedy value is, is, is sky high. Well, sky high. And you came up when we first you know, were talking about doing this show back in the summer. I mean, you came up with all sorts of crazy ideas. Clearly not sober uh, when you came, <laughs> came up with them at all. No. Last night, though, we were just talking that this was a sober idea. And, uh, and I'm pretty excited for it. I'm really not. I'm worried. I'm worried about it. You should be a little worried, and I was not sober. We talked, and then I got less sober, and then I came up with this idea. <laughs> but here's the idea. It's, it's predictions. Greg is going to give me the matchups. I'm not going to tell you who's going to win. I'm just going to tell you whether or not I believe the matchup is going to end up being crunk <laughs> or funky, funky, fresh. And if you don't know the difference, I don't really have time to explain. It's not that long a podcast. 
<laughs> but I will tell you which one I believe it will be. And then next week, maybe we'll go back and see if I was right. What, you, what is even the difference? You're going to have to find out, buddy. When I, told, when I told Emika, my wife, this idea, though, she did start dying of, of laughter. Well, I think because you're married to her, she doesn't get a lot of humor in her marriage so that whenever I can kind of step in and, and uh, you know take the brunt she does she is a big Jesselnik fan I won I, it took me the time to win your You've, wife it's over. taken a little bit you you she warmed up and, and won you over okay let's go through <laughs> let's go through some uh, some of the big games of the week okay uh, let's really start on on the Sunday games depending on when people are listening to this um, New Orleans at Indy Annapolis New Orleans at Indy in Indianapolis. I'm gonna have to say that's gonna be that's gonna be funky, funky, fresh. If it was in New Orleans, I would have gone crunk. You know, I feel like New Orleans is a great uh, crunk field advantage. But if they're gonna be in Indy, Indy coming off that embarrassing uh, loss to the Pats, I think it's gonna be a funky, funky, fresh game for sure. And you can take that to the bank. The Jets at the Patriots this weekend. Jets at Patriots. This is gonna. I, I wish you would save this till the end, but I'm gonna have to go crunky, crunky, fresh. Uh, it's kind of a mixture of the two. Again, if it had been in New York, I would have said funky, funky, fresh. Going to Foxborough, you're going to get a little crunk in there. You can't not. You know what I mean? It's kind of just the, the Foxborough mentality. I think the Patriots have a lot to prove in terms of how, uh, how fresh they are, but not so much how funky they are. I think they've kind of proved their funkiness. So I'm going to say crunky, crunky, fresh. I like how you describe whether it'd be different if it was in New York, but in New England. Because that's when you think New England and Foxborough, you think crunk. Mm-mm. No, you. No, I messed it up. Yes, I ruined the whole thing. No, I think it's still going pretty well. <laughs> Dallas at New York. Dallas at. I mean, that's a big game in the NFC. East. Dallas at New York. Tony Romo won't be back for this. You know, your buddy. No, Tell my, Tony no, Romo. He's still, he's still drinking my vodka somewhere. Uh, let's see, Cowboys in New York. I'm gonna have to go crunk. That's it. That's it. You know, it's it's a coin flip. To be honest, I could have said funky, funky, fresh and been confident, but I'm going to say crunk. Why would you not be honest? I'm being 100% honest. I'm being almost too honest. Maybe if I lied, then we wouldn't be wouldn't be going through these questions. Philadelphia at Carolina. Good Sunday night game this week. That's a great Sunday night game. Uh, you know what? I'm going to say the first half is going to be crunk. The first half is going to be crunk as hell. If, I can, if I'm allowed to talk like that on, on the show. Second half. A little less crunk, a little more funky, funky, fresh. And then the fourth quarter, if you're if you're like allergic to funky, funky, fresh, turn the TV off and throw it out the window because you're going to die. <laughs> I just want to remind you, you wanted to go through 16 games of this. I did. And I'm kind of cutting it off. Uh, last one, Monday Night Football. <laughs> the Baltimore Ravens uh, thought they were going to be a good team, so that's why they're in prime time, one in five. But going to my favorite team, uh, other than the Patriots this year, the team of the Around the NFL podcast, the Ara the Arizona Cardinals. The Arizona Cardinals are coming off that loss to the Steelers, which was a beautiful game. Baltimore needs this one, so I'm going to have to say – I'm going to say across the board, funky, funky, fresh on this one. And, I mean, no one else is going to agree with me. I know in the NFL Network people are going to hear I'm the, That's that insane that. that you would go funky, funky, fresh with that. It's the most obvious crunk thing of the week. You have Arians and the Kangol hat. You have Carson Palmer. You have uh, Tyron Matthew. You have P P Patrick Peterson. You have the whole desert thing. I think if that doesn't scream crunk, what screams crunk, Anthony? Uh, other games. Give me the, give me the next 16. <laughs> that's it that's over there's no way that's making it in is it that's definitely making it in that was great that See, was you great improvisational gold you know we brought back funky funky fresh i i feel you and well, you know what let's let's leave it in and then next week if i was wrong about any of these we can go back and cut it out now <laughs> here's the question though what describes it being wrong do we have a classification for that It'll be, well, trust no. me, it'll be obvious. Well, let's okay. not, it'll be obvious. Let's not be obtuse, Brandon. I was just excited for the game that yeah. uh, you didn't throw in there based on Anthony's love of location, going Bills, Jaguars, in London. Oh, Ooh. okay. Well, all right. You, Brandon, you helped the show for the first time there. Thank you. Bills, that was great. Bills, Jaguars, in, in London. Bills, Jaguars, in London. 6.30 in the morning, you have to wake up and listen and watch it only on – Yahoo being streamed internationally, first time ever. Were you aware of that? Is that gonna be the first NFL game that no one watches? <laughs> <laughs> crunk that or game, funky, funky, fresh? This is a great chance for me to break out my accent. It's gonna be crunk, mate. Is it? Would you like a little funky, funky, fresh, love? 
That's the worst. Thing. That's why <laughs> they don't have you uh, play characters on TV shows. It's just you know, if, you, if you're on a show and you're just playing Anthony Jeselnik. Yeah, I know. Of course, I only play comedians. Is uh, that Crocodile Dundee too? Well, like, what was that? That was that was uh, that was the Queen of England. That was the Queen. All right, Bills, Jags. Funky, funky, fresh. Funky, 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 funky fresh. Fresh. Um, well, who knows? M maybe no one even heard uh, the rest of that segment. You said that there's a chance that we would cut it all out, but let's be honest. Once you do three or four minutes on anything, you're going to fall in love with it. We would never cut anything. I'm, I think this is the best part. I would, I would edit this to make it the beginning of the podcast. <laughs> <laughs> this is the end. Then how would you close it? We do need to close it. Do you have, do you have any, um, any parting words? Because this, this really could be the first and last um, time we ever do this it's very possible um why don't you end it on like a real note tell me how are uh, how are my godchildren doing? how are how is your daughter and your son well um walker has fantastic been the best. 